Hi there. Want to know a little bit more about manifestation? My name is Tamara Doris and I am your real estate coach. And I'm going to break down in this video the three different ideas, theories, and even the science behind how we actually manifest things. You know, when it first started out, as far as when I first started exploring it, I came strictly from the metaphysical, spiritual, what we call woo-woo. You know, put a crystal under your pillow and write it down and look at the moon. I'm just kidding. Just really, really based on either faith, nothing wrong with that, but leaving it mystical. It's when we say, oh, well, I bet that the universe will bring me the answer, right? Or I'm just gonna trust. Now, nothing wrong with that. I wanna say that again, nothing wrong with that. But when it made my life so dramatically different from where I was, not in a great place to where I grew to in a really good place. And it was just almost like magic. And that's what I followed. I followed metaphysical teachings and that's how I made incredible life changes. And I won't go and bore you with my story, but I'm talking kicked out of high school, food stamps, really, really my car's repossessed. I mean, literally at the, at the bottom of the barrel, right? And now for the last 20 years, I've been a college professor. I've written and published 25 books. I have two businesses You know, I've been successful in real estate in coaching in professorship. So it worked and I'm like, how did it work? And so it really, really drove me crazy. And so I decided to explore more about understanding how manifestation really works. So I'm going to present to you the two other ways, because I already just explained the first one. The first one is just believe in the universe or have faith in God or whatever you want. And we'll call it mystical. That's the mystical way. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I've said that three times. So you really get that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Right. But that's not how my mind works. My mind is like, how in the heck did I do that? Like, whoa, you know, really strange things would happen for me. So I began to explore. And what I came across is that method that I actually teach mostly. And it's what I call quantum consciousness. And the quantum consciousness theory of manifestation works like this. In quantum physics, it's now being said that the universe itself is consciousness. Now, I know that gets really trippy. Like, what does that mean? But let me break it down for you. Basically, the observer effect tells us that whatever we choose to see, we experience. And so one of the methods I teach called metacreation is really about quieting your brain waves, getting into a relaxed alpha, alpha state, maybe a theta state over time, and envisioning in your mind an image of an experience that you want to have, and then feeling as if you already have it. So what we're doing here is we're speaking the universe's language or quantum physics language, whatever you want to call it. Image, emotion, and repetition. Those are the three things. I say it all the time. So we can call it being quantum in one way, but also here's what I want you to get. Even if you didn't believe or didn't care about quantum science at all, and you were only into psychology and human behavior and hypnotherapy, here's what you would know. You would know that the subconscious mind does not know the difference, not one iota between what's real and what's imagined. It will believe you if you give it an image, add the emotions, and do it repetitively, it will believe that it has had that experience. Okay, so what? So this, here's the thing. If your subconscious mind thinks that you've already had an experience or that you're used to having an experience or that you deserve an experience, it's going to bend over backwards to make you have that experience. Why? Because inside your brain, you have what's called a reticular activator system called the RAS for short. And the RAS's main job in life is to scan the environment and constantly call out things to you that fall in alignment with what it believes to be true about you. Because it thinks it's you. It's really your mind, but it thinks it's you. Get that? We, at any given moment, are exposed to about 1.5 billion, that's with a B, billion bits of information. Like every second and a half, something crazy like that. Well, the poor little reticular activator system can only process about 1,500 to 2,000 bits of information every second and a half. Still seems like a lot to me, right? but it's not. And so here's what happens. All these opportunities are around us, but because we're not focused on what we want, we're not putting it in our brain, feeding it to our subconscious mind. We're just going about our merry way 
and like letting them give an example. Oh, the world sucks. And what's going to go wrong now? And I never have any clients. And oh, this house is never going to sell. If that's what I'm telling myself repetitively, that's what my subconscious mind is believing. And that's what my reticular activator system is going to be on the lookout for. So every corner, every thought, everything I see is going to be aimed at this isn't going to work out. Whereas if I've convinced my subconscious mind that I have this, you know, beautiful best-selling book and I'm on Oprah and I'm at the red carpet. I mean, I'm just pulling stuff out of the air. That sounds really fun to me. And I just see it in my mind over and over again. I'm going to go out and while someone else might go out and just have a bad day or whatever, I might go out and, and meet Oprah stage manager. Do you know what I mean? And it's not because I did anything better or different. It's because I'm training my brain to be aware of little tiny nuances that any other brain would just totally ignore. And remember when we're talking quantum and we know this, we know this from science, everything is interrelated. There is no difference between this crystal stone and my hand on a subatomic level. In other words, if we put both of them under a supersonic microscope, it'd be the same. There's no, there's no definition. There's no, my hand stops and this starts really important to understand that. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if I have this subconscious mind that's on a path, on a mission for this particular outcome, that everything else is just fields. It's just quantum fields. I'm a quantum field. You're a quantum field. Wouldn't you like to be a quantum field too? But seriously, we're all quantum fields and they're all mixing up. So it's not outrageous at all for something ridiculous to happen. And you're like, no way. And I, I don't tell, I tell this story sometimes, but not a lot, but let's just say I had a client once, a, a very top producing agent who wanted to be on a TV show. And it was like the farthest thing from his mind. And we started working together and literally within a week, the producer for that very show called and said, Hey, we're opening one in your state. It was like, what? Where did this come from? I'll tell you where it came from. It came from a subconscious mind because we programmed it. Now listen, the subconscious mind is 95%. Did you get that? 95%. Some psychologists, some neuroscientists are saying up to 98%. And you know what? I'm in that camp. I believe that. I believe our entire lives are ran by our subconscious thinking. And if you think about it, no pun intended, we are living in our intellect. We're living in our prefrontal cortex, almost all of our waking hours. We're living from ego mind. And ego mind's not bad. We need it. We need it to make sure we look cute and, you know, take care of ourselves and look both ways before crossing the street. We need our ego mind. It's our personality, but it's our subconscious mind that's running the show. So doesn't it just make plain old good sense to program it? I think so, because remember, and I'll do another video just on the subconscious mind for you, because I want to stay on track with our manifestation. Uh, methods. But just remember that if 95% of your life is being ran by your subconscious mind, doesn't it just make good sense to program it? Absolutely. Because otherwise, who the heck knows what's back there? I can tell you, you want to know what's back there? Look around you, whatever you have, whatever experiences, circumstances, relationships, financial, career, all of it is what your subconscious mind thinks you said you want. Think about that for a while. Okay. Second, or third, really, because the first one is mystical, right? The second one is the quantum consciousness, which is what I just covered on, you know, took a long time covering it. But the third one, and this is one I just want to open your mind to. I'm not, I, I don't teach it very often. I certainly have researched it plenty. It's called the multiverse theory or, you know, mini worlds theory. Hugh Everett, who was a brilliant um, quantum physicist, sorry, a brilliant quantum physicist came up with the many worlds theories back. Uh, was it in the fifties? I think it was in the fifties and it was just laugh like, Oh, whatever, you know, you're smoking crack, dude, whatever. Well, as science has unfolded and quantum physics has, you know, grown and grown and grown, it's like, maybe that's it. So what does that mean to you? I, it, because it's nobody understands quantum physics and, and the, the old joke in quantum physics with all the quantum physicists is if anyone says they understand quantum physics, physics, they're lying because nobody understands it. And I believe that because it's really, woo. but here's the thing with the mini worlds theory, what it's saying is there's a version of you. There's a million versions of you on all different timelines. Okay. We, and we know now we didn't used to know, but we know now that there are many different dimensions. And, and you've, I'm sure you've heard people saying, because it's lots of people are talking about ascension and 
3D, they, you know, they don't mean the glasses, the 3D glasses, they mean third dimension. We are in a third dimension reality. Think of when you draw the square where you can see the sides of that's a 3D image. We live in a 3D world, you know, it's a three dimensional world. There are more dimensions. There's a fourth dimension, a fifth dimension, and it's estimated to be up to 12 dimensions. And it depends who you're talking to, but I'm, this is science too. It's metaphysics and science, but science for sure. So if we have all these different dimensions, then the possibility exists where there's a version of you on each of those different dimensions. So when we look at manifestation, from that perspective. What we're looking at is for you to close your eyes, get into a deep state of relaxation, do the same thing I'm talking about, see the image that you wanna manifest, feel it with your emotions, right? And do it over and over again. So we've got imagery, repetition, and emotion. Again, same thing, kind of fishy, same thing. And what, what this theory would tell us happens is that we enter a new timeline. Now that one may sound more far-fetched to you, and I, I tend to teach, especially more publicly, I tend to teach and write more about the quantum consciousness perspective because it's easier to grasp. It's easier for us to understand, okay, we have a subconscious mind, I can trick it, reticular activator system, sounds real sciencey, I'll go with that. But I just want you to be open to the possibility that you also have the possibility of jumping timelines. And the beautiful thing about the mini worlds theory is you don't got to go anywhere. In other words, the estimations of it would be I'm sitting here and I'm doing the work, whatever the work is, you know, I call it metacreating. And then I open my eyes. Everything looks the same, except this time, let's say my husband, who never, ever, ever wants to watch romantic comedies, walks in my office and says, hey, I hear Ryan Reynolds is in a new rom-com. Want to watch it? And I'm like, <sighs> that's what I'm talking about. It happens all the time for me, and it can happen for you if you're if you're open and aware to it, okay? Who's to say what it is? I'm just telling you, based on my research in science and quantum physics and my application and experiences and working with clients, all these things combined, I don't care which of those two it is. I don't care which of the three it is. It could be mystical and, and, and faith, that's fine too. But I'm just telling you that between those three things, Anyone who tells you manifestation is just woo-woo and you can't manifest something or or if you can't meet the person of your dreams or you can't manifest several listings a month, pff, yes, you can. You absolutely can, right? Absolutely. So keep in mind that whatever you put in your mind, whether it's going with the quantum consciousness, with faith-based, or with the jumping timelines, whatever you put in your mind over time, with repetition, with emotion, you're going to make changes in your life. Okay. That is a guarantee. Now, if you need me help with that, or you'd like to talk to me about coaching, getting into one of my programs so we can expedite it. So you can have someone which can be very, very helpful to help you with your blind spots, because that's the thing we think we're doing the work, but then nothing happens good. And we're like, what, what am I doing? Sometimes you have to be talking to someone else so that they can catch your language. They can catch your blind spot, right? So I'm kind of like a mirror for my clients. I'm like, did you see what you just said there? Or did you hear, you know? So so it's very good to have the help. If you don't need the help and you just wanna go read the books, look me up on Amazon. I have so many books and I have so many videos. I would love to help you. I would love to meet you if I don't already know you. And I hope you have a beautiful manifesting day. Thanks for watching.